talk about the outside situation, the the view of of people, the religious view, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We talk about the culture, and there's certain things that have crossed over into the culture. Say it be uh, design, you know, clothing, um, things in television, movies, stuff like that. Where do you think that there? Can you point to things that you think they've gotten it right, and where they've gotten it completely wrong? Uh, so far, most I haven't found really a whole lot of things that were right. Um, even a lot of the books that are out there, a lot of the movies, even some of the adult ones, like the story of, oh, everybody's heard of that one. That is so far-fetched, it's just crazy. Um, the, to the, uh, sometimes the ones that they show in movies are really to the extreme, and, and a lot of people consider me quite extreme, but, uh, you know, we don't have all these blood oaths, and uh, there was a, a good one, though, Eyes Wide Shut, with that had uh, Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise in, which people might find a little bit like that's that's really far fetched, and yet that was more realistic in the ritual aspect of this type of lifestyle than what a lot of the other movies are. We were very, in the South especially, we're much more into rituals and much more into brotherhoods. It, uh, they stole a lot actually from religion because a lot of the rituals that churches use and things like that, they use them to bond people together, to bring people together. And down South in this lifestyle, they did the same thing. It's it's really a, entirely different than the northern lifestyle scene is. That was one of the things I wanted to ask you about is that there seems to be a ritualistic aspect to it. There is. And do you find for yourself or for other people that there's a, um, I don't know how to put it, but kind of a, a warm up and a cool down and there's certain music and certain things that are necessary in order to get to that place that you need to be or... Uh, you can't, a lot of people will use that. I, I do. I do enjoy music because music uh, is a very good thing to relax somebody. Um, I we use candles. Uh, there are a lot of times you'll have incense, something to get the senses stimulated. Um, whether it's the right type of lighting or the right type of music or the right type of aroma, it does help. But any, but it, it's more than that too. It's uh, yeah. There's that warm-up period. You want to get somebody so they're comfortable and relaxed and things like that. And then after you do everything in the BDSM side, you do want to have a cool-down period. You do want to. Uh, you don't just want to leave somebody cold. You want them to. You want to bring them down gently. You want to reassure them. You want them to know everything's okay. Uh, you spend time doing that if you know what you're doing. But, you know, some of the other things I'm talking about, there, there's all sorts of rituals, even a lot of people in this lifestyle do day to day. Uh, a submissive even washing the feet of, of their dominant. That's a ritual. That's something that builds closeness. It's something that the submissive learns to uh, depend upon. It's something that she knows she's performing for her dominant, which nobody else is doing. It's something, or like even when I took my wife as my slave, and pardon the expression slave, there's a whole ceremony for it. Um, different aspects of this lifestyle have different rituals to them. Um, down south, even how you sit, where each individual is supposed to sit, is set up by ritual, it's by ranking, it's by all sorts of different decisions get brought into this. Uh, some, pla you know, certain houses have different house rules. Even uh, I've been to houses where a submissive isn't to sit on the furniture, where they sit at the floor by their dominant's feet, but they're always by their dominant. It's uh, it's to reinforce the roles, but it also the the rituals. The purpose of the rituals is to keep the bond there, keep the closeness there, not to make somebody feel less than somebody else. It's t 
to be be themselves. Uh, it enables them to practice daily what they believe. And whether you're doing it at somebody else's house, you're doing it at your own, you're doing it in public, um, even in, or for that matter, even in public. Uh, even how you walk together can be set up. You, you can develop how you want your submissive to walk with you at, at a certain, on a certain side or a certain position or whatever. But these are little things you can do in a DS lifestyle that you can do in public, people won't notice. Uh, so, it, and it does keep the closeness there, and it's, it's important to keep the closeness there, that everybody keeps, because otherwise everything becomes blurred like it does from the day you're born, the way society is. Talk about these ritual aspects. Do you find that a lot of people in this lifestyle were were raised in a religious household where they had previous ritual in their life? Not, I can't say so much in the North because I haven't come across a whole lot of religious things in the North. Uh, but in the South, yes. A lot of them were raised in very religious households. And, and it's, you know, since you bring that up, it's, it's amazing then that the South actually has more rituals than the North does. The North isn't quite uh, doesn't quite come from the same religious background. It's more diverse. It's more neutral on it. Because the question I would have is if, in some way, these these new rituals replace the old rituals. I I have often considered that uh, DS is is a almost a religion in itself if you practice in it all the time, uh, because you do have the rituals, you do have the beliefs, you do have um, rules that you live by, not just the normal laws that you have, but you have rules that you live by, including the masters, including the dominants. A a anybody who is a good dominant is going to have a set of rules for himself that he has to follow. And just like a submissive has certain things that are going to be required of her, a good dominant will have a set of rules for himself that the submissive knows what to expect from this person. Because one of the things that, you know, it's obviously a symbolism, it's an, it's an image that we have, even if you're the most, I would say, non-religious person. Mm -hmm. You had brought up, you know, the foot washing. Mm -hmm. uh, also, in, in reference to, you know, the flogging and stuff like that, could you find within, within Christianity? Yeah, or even all sorts of other religions, too. And yet there's symbols that uh, this lifestyle uses also that uh, just like any relig other religion is going to have uh, symbols that they go by. Well, granted, we don't worship our symbols, but we do have symbols that are, ha are directly attributed to this li type of lifestyle. 